Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Scott, and you might be surprised to see that we're doing a second video this week. We're going to be painting the new terrain from the Kill Team Octarius starter set. I'm very excited for this project. It was also kind of an improvised project. I really wasn't planning this one, and you can kind of see that the paint scheme is a little bit all over the place. So let's go ahead and jump into how I painted this. To start this project off, I've primed the model with Lead Belcher Spray Primer from Citadel. We're going to start off painting this terrain by shading the whole thing with Agrax Earthshade. And we're doing this all over the entire model because we're not quite sure which panels are going to be other colors and which ones are going to remain silver. So we're painting them all the same way, that way it doesn't matter, we don't have to go back and do it later. Once the shade is dried, we're going to dry brush the entire model with Necron Compound. This is going to build our silver color back up so that it shines and catches the light. Now this combined with the shade we did before is going to give the metal a sort of dirty appearance. It's going to have that hint of brown mixed in with all the silver and that's going to give us a good look for orc terrain, which we would expect to be pretty dirty. With our base color established, we're going to start picking out other colors of metal. We're going to start with Rune Lord Brass. We're just going to pick out random panels that we think should be a different color. Um, we're going to do this with a couple different metal colors. Now I've chosen to paint all of the panels that have this sort of square texturing on it with the Rune Lord Brass. And there's a couple panels throughout the model, so keep your eyes peeled for them as you are painting your own model. With that color done, we're going to pick out some of the floor panels with Iron Warriors. And this is a uh, darker silver color. It's going to make some of our floor panels just stick out and look a little different from the lead belcher that we have around it. And this is just going to help to make it so there's something to look at other than just the same old silver throughout the whole model. Once we've done that, we're going to take Screaming Bell, and we're going to pick out just some of the other random panels again. There's no real method to our madness here, just picking out the panels that we think look good. Now you notice I've switched over to a different train piece, and I'm going to do this throughout the video. I'll switch between these two different pieces based on which one I feel shows the technique the best. Our final metallic color will be Balthazar Gold. I'm going to paint this on a handful of the floor panels, as well as any of the wall panels that have holes in them. There are a handful of just great uh, style panels that are scattered throughout the train piece, and we're going to paint all of those with this Balthazar Gold color. With all of our metal colors established, we're going to shade them with Agrax Earthshade. And we're going to use this on all of the copper and brass style metals that we've just painted. Um, the only one that's not going to use this is the Iron Warriors. We're going to shade that with Null Oil. And this is just going to help to make all those panels look a little bit more dirty. And it's also going to help us start to see the texture that's in those panels a lot better. With all of our metallic colors done, we're going to start with Aberlin Sunset. We're going to begin to pick out the matte colors of our building. Now I've chosen to do all of the more rounded surfaces with the yellow. In my opinion, that just looked like the best place for them. Now yellow is kind of a picky color to work with, so this is actually going to take a couple steps. Once our base yellow is dried, we're going to shade it with Cassandora Yellow. And this is going to give it somewhat of an orange tint, 
And it's going to make that yellow look a lot brighter, whereas before it was kind of a dull yellow. While our shade dries, we're going to go ahead and pick out all the red panels. We're going to use corn red for this. We're going to focus on just any panels that have uh, skulls or symbols on them. We're going to paint the panels behind those symbols with the red. And you're going to notice this is kind of a dark red. But don't worry, we're going to be dry brushing it with a lighter red later on. We're going to shade our red panels with Karaberg Crimson. This is going to darken them down even more, but it's also going to seep into all of the little dents that are in the panels. And when we dry brush it later on, it's going to really pop and make those dents a lot more visible. While that red shade is drying, it's time to return to our yellow. And we're going to go back through with Averland Sunset. And we're going to start to highlight the more raised surfaces. Now anywhere that the shade from earlier has pulled up, we're going to leave that dark. We're only going to focus on the raised edges. This is almost more of a glaze than it is a, a layer, because you're going to build up the color gradually. We're going to make all our yellow panels a little bit brighter. We're going to use Uriel Yellow for this technique here, and we're going to just glaze this over the top. And it's just going to make our yellow panels a little bit brighter, and as I said, it's a glaze, so you don't want to go super thick. You want to go in nice thin layers and build the color up until you get a nice transition from the darker yellow to the brighter yellow. Our yellow panels are done now, so we're going to start dry brushing Astarath Red onto all the red panels. This is a brighter red, and we're going to go kind of heavy with this dry brush. This is going to create patches that are really bright, and then patches that are still that same dark corn red color. And This is going to make it so that our panels have a lot of contrast to them, and it's really going to catch the eye when you look at it on the tabletop. Now that we're done with the red, we're going to take Abaddon Black, and we're just going to pick out the door with this color. Now this is going to take a couple coats, so go nice and light, be controlled, and try not to get this on the silver, because then you'll have to go back and repaint it, and you don't want to have to do that. While we have the black paint out, we're also going to pick out a couple of the tubes that are on the models. Um, these tubes have sort of a... Uh, ringed texture to them, and there's a couple of them spread throughout the two different terrain pieces. I decided that I needed a little bit of blue in this model to break up all of the warm colors we've been painting with, so I'm using the Crag Blue, and I'm just going to pick out a couple panels here and there, just to kind of clash with the rest of the colors, just so that we have something different to look at. And you could really do this with any colors you wanted. The idea is just to create a little bit of different variety to look at. Now we're going to start painting all of the skulls and symbols that are on the different panels. And we're going to do this with Wraithbone. Now at this point you're also going to use the Wraithbone to pick out any of the lights that are on the walls that you want to have glowing later on. We're also going to pick out one of the tubes that's on the front of our other terrain piece so that we can make it have a glowing blue look to it later on as well, almost as if it were like a plasma conduit. Once our white is dried, we're going to take Agrax Earthshade, and we're going to go through and dot each of the rivets that's on the skulls and other symbols throughout the terrain piece. We're also going to take this, and we're going to figure out any spots where we think dirt and water might pool up and then drip from the symbols. 
and we're going to make this look like it's dripped down and cause streaks in the white. That way it's not quite a pure white. Now we're also going to take the Agrax Earthshade and on the other terrain piece our skull has a bit of texture to it so we're going to water down the Agrax Earthshade and then just wash it all over the symbol. Now we're going to pick out all the lights, and we're going to water down a bit of contrast Talazar blue for this. We're just going to apply it as if it were a wash all over the surface of the lights. We're also going to highlight a couple coils that are on the side of the terrain piece. And then there's also that tube that I mentioned earlier on the other terrain piece. You can see it right there. You see how that kind of makes it look like a plasma conduit. And now we're going to do a fun little rust technique that I picked up from a friend. We're going to start by using Cassandora Yellow. We're going to wash this all over one of our lead belcher panels on one of our terrain pieces. This is going to give it kind of a, almost a gold or bronze look to it at first. We're going to do some fun stuff with dry brushing after it's dried. And we're going to put this on a couple random other spots throughout the terrain as well. Anywhere we want to have a rust effect going on. Once our yellow shade is dried, we're going to take and dry brush with Troll Slayer Orange. We're going to do kind of a heavy dry brush here, and this is going to start to make it so it no longer looks like a metallic color. It's going to start making it look like rust. And you'll see this develop as we put two other colors over the top of it afterwards. Without cleaning our brush out, we're going to go straight to dry brushing now with corn red. Now we're not going to do this everywhere, but we are going to do it over a few of the more raised parts of the rust effect. Now because we didn't clean our brush out, this is actually going to blend and create a darker orange kind of color. Once we've done that, we're now going to take, and once again without cleaning our brush out, immediately move to Abaddon Black. We're just going to put this in just a couple spots, and this is just to make the rust look a little bit dirty. Now we're going to look through our rust area, and anywhere that we think water might have pooled, we're going to put nihilic oxide. Now putting this on here tells us that this metal is an alloy that contains both iron and copper. That's the only way it would have both of these rust colors going on at the same time. We're also going to put this Nihilic Oxide anywhere else on any of the other terrain panels that we think water might have pooled and there might have been copper in that metal panel. With the rust done, we're going to go through and we're going to just pick out any of the electric cords, the cables, or tubes that we still haven't painted. We're going to use Warpstone Glow for this. Now you could really use any color you want. I just chose a green color because we haven't used green in this project yet and it is Orc Terrain. So it's got to have some green somewhere, right? At least that was my logic here. And the very last thing we're going to do is go back through with Lead Belcher. We're going to pick out any of the spots where we overpainted or any spots that we decided last minute we want them to be silver instead of whatever other color we painted them. We're also going to pick out all the rivets at this point on any of the colored panels. And take your time with the rivets. You're in no hurry. It's best to just do it right the first time instead of having to go back through and redo it over and over again. And with that, our terrain pieces are done. Now we've painted these up to a tabletop standard. There's more we could do with it, but I didn't want to make this video run longer than it needed to. And if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and like it, and then subscribe to my channel, and then leave a comment and let me know if there's any techniques or specific models you'd like to see me paint in the future. We'll see you next time. Have a great day.